Hi, I'm Dave from Sailing Laguna. In our last video, we had a look at downtown Fort Lauderdale and almost got squashed by a super yacht. We then went through the whole saga of getting our anti-fouling done at Just Catamarans and made sure we had our fix of bridges before setting off on our next passage. We set off from Fort Lauderdale and out through the 17th Street Bridge to a wonderful sunrise over the Atlantic Ocean. We've just passed Darnia Beach and Hollywood Beach just over here. They're the high rise as you can see. And we're actually just outside in the background there, uh, a place called Hallover, Hallover Inlet. Um, so it's where the outcoming tide meets the ingoing swirl, creates standing waves. And the boats, many boats coming out of there, uh, hit it at speed and they fly through the air. People fall out of the boats, people break ribs. Um, so yeah, after you're watching this video, go and check out Hallover Inlet on YouTube and watch some of the craziness that goes on there. We're also running the cedar plug out the back here. Um, I've never actually even caught anything on the cedar plug, so it hasn't worked so far, but that's what people have told us to run, and that's what we're doing. Okay, so we've had a nice easy day today. Uh, no sailing, just motoring from um, Fort Lauderdale to Miami. It's going to take us about five hours and um, there's a few clouds around but I've taken the opportunity to do a couple of loads of washing so we look like a bit of a Chinese laundry at the moment. Well in the name of being truthful about everything that happens on a boat I ran over a rope this morning Oh dear. So as we were leaving Los Alamos, it was uh, Los Alos it was relatively early this morning, light wasn't up. Um, but one of the ropes that holds the uh, tender up there was hanging over the back and I've put it into a reverse and I've wrapped it up. So uh, fortunately all I had to do was, or what I had to do was basically lean over the back of the boat with a knife um, and I was able to cut underneath the boat you know, to try and save as much rope as possible. And then fortunately with the lagoons, the props are relative towards, are relatively towards the back of the boat. So I could actually reach under and just sort of, it wasn't wrapped around the prop, it was actually wrapped around the um, thread that comes out the back of the prop and the rope unwound. But nonetheless, I reversed over a rope. Da -da. All right, well, here we are. We are coming into Miami. Check it out. So there's the glamorous shot, of course, that you're supposed to see on YouTube. And of course, what we're not supposed to show you is we're coming in with all of our laundry hanging up because it still hasn't dried. Oh dear. Now, something else that we also didn't show you is the other night back at Fort Lauderdale, um, the cameras don't work very well at night, but we were coming past some tugs and I noticed one of the tugs was basically had its engines in forward So it was putting out of course a, a, a wash out the back and I sort of said to Sam Oh, well, all right, just prepare yourself here when we hit this wash I knew we were, the boat was going to turn a bit, but I was surprised the tug wash and we were, we were you know Maybe 75 meters off the tug um, The tugs wash really just it pushed the boat almost 90 degrees um, had us heading straight for the bank. Uh, fortunately, of course, after a few seconds, we made it into the wash a little bit, and so we sort of could curve back off to the left again. But it was amazing uh, how much the tugs wash through this 40 foot boat around like it was nothing.
Miami Marine Stadium was built for boat racing, but fell into disrepair after Hurricane Andrew in 1992. It's a real shame it hasn't been fixed, as I'm sure it would create the ultimate atmosphere for the world's greatest tunnel boat races. There's Joel. You could have hydro, circuit racing, jet ski racing, water ski and wakeboard tournaments, water ski shows, um, etc. There's a whole list of things that could go on here at this stadium. It must seem a little ironic when the Miami Boat Show is held here and the multi-million dollar boats have this as their backdrop. Alright Cooper, what's going on? Well, first we're going to stand up paddle boards to the little island over there. And if we get there in time, we can be we, we can have the whole island to ourselves. So there's no one there at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right, 10.30 on a Saturday morning <laughs> and there's nobody at the island That's yet. Where are you going, Campbell? I thought you were going to take me. Well, on a stand-up paddleboard right now, and we're heading towards a boat, which is dangerous, okay then. We're heading towards an island. Like, there's Cooper back there on the glass ground. Look at all the garbage. Look at all the garbage. Well, we have a little patch of sand here, just in from the boat, but um, oh, I don't know whether you can quite see it there, but there's numerous bottles, there's rope, there's garbage. Um, walking along the foreshore here, you know, it's just littered with garbage. Um, Australia has something called Clean Up Australia Day, where once a year, uh, some of the population, not a large part, but, but certain, you know, people that want to, they go out and they basically clean up the, uh, this, this sort of garbage here. Clean Up Australia Day was started by Ian Kinnan, who was a sailor that was fed up with how dirty Sydney Harbour had become. We've played in the waters around Sydney Harbour, see our earlier videos, but after visiting the shore here at Miami, I told the kids we would only be swimming from the back of the boat so that we didn't end up with some glass in our feet. Well, it only took about five minutes to um, half fill my bag, and then I come across this and you just go, okay, so that, so that didn't um, fall off someone's boat, didn't inadvertently get blown into the water or whatever. That's an actual knot on the tree and someone's just cut the rope, couldn't be bothered undoing the knot or something. I mean, come on America, you can do better than that. <laughs> jump up here and then just jump in, get the, it's like ripping a band-aid off. <laughs> well, see, Campbell has no troubles. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> I'm going to lose my bikini. Oh, oh well that's good. Yep, the views will go up. <laughs> you ready? Three, Let's go. two, one. Alright, well, we're uh, mid Saturday now, just before 2 o'clock at the uh, Marine Stadium Anchorage. So, the Marine Stadium Anchorage is, well, let me give you a rundown of it. It's going to be busy with jet skis zooming backwards and forwards. They go through the anchorage and everything, so if you're on a rolly boat, you're probably not going to enjoy it. Um, Luigi's Island, you probably just saw some footage of the boys and I over there paddle boarding in the morning. It was empty basically until like 10.30, 11 o'clock. And then yeah, people started turning up. And as you can see now, uh, there's almost standing room only over at the island if you actually wanted a piece of sand. Um, but most people in this anchorage here actually seem to just sort of party from the back of their boat or swim from the back of their boat. Um, there's not as much sand available as say, for instance, like Peanut Island um, or the Sand Islands or even in Sydney Harbour, you know, there's not as much sand here in Miami. So everyone is just basically hanging out on the back of their boats uh, or the front of their boats and um, enjoying the waters and everything in those locations. Anyway, that gives you a bit of an idea of what uh, the Marine Stadium anchorage is like.
All right, well, I know you probably can't see my face, uh, but here we are in the stadium, Miami Stadium Anchorage. It's about eight o'clock on a Saturday night, and I guess we can see by the line of procession there that maybe the charter boats times are up or something, because there's a bunch of boats leaving. We stayed at the stadium Friday and Saturday nights, and we expected there to be parties and noise late into the night. However, Sunday night was the straw that broke the camel's back. One boat played loud music not until 11pm or 2am, but played right through the night until 6am. It was so loud that even boats in the next anchorage south could clearly hear the music. It kind of sums up what we experienced here. It seems that there are a few, not all, in Miami that are that self-centered they couldn't care less about the broader environment or surroundings. All right, well, we're coming up to the William, William M. Powell or something like that bridge in Miami, in the Key of Biscayne. And we are wondering, well, not wondering, hoping that we fit under it. This is the first bridge that we will have been under. It's a rated height of 76, so it's got a clearance of 76 feet. That would be at high tide. And our mast apparently is about 67 feet. So we should have 10 feet, but I'm sure it's gonna look much closer than that. Maybe a few foot in it, and we're through. If you have anything to add about the Marine Stadium, then please comment below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time. Hey, hey guys, are you ready for a jump in? Are you actually ready for a jump in? Well, I'm not going to do about this of a jump. You ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Thank <laughs> you.